I'm outside Jay's Barber Club and I'm on Seaview Street off York Street and uh, this, is, this is what Jay has outside. Don't have a bad hair day and he's referring to your man. Call him to Jay's today. Best haircut of your life. And you can read the reviews of this place uh, if you don't believe the, the blurb there. So I'm going in and I'm going to have a wee chat with Jay. This is Jay Miller. And this is his setup here. This is his setup here. I'll just video the, the actual shop. Obviously, he's got a sense of humor. And this is a tribute to his good friend, David Dummigan, because it's better sweet symphony, symphony this life. Um, this was his friend, nicknamed Flump, and uh, sadly has died. And this is where I am. Welcome to the club. And this is the man himself. And this is his book. And this is all the charges. So if you if you want to come down here, this is what you're gonna, gonna pay. But you will get a good job done on you. Okay, Jay. Here we go. Right. This is Jay's Barber Club, and we're on the Sea Sea View Street. And you've also got Jay's Academy uh, up at Rathcool. And it's, is it operating? Yes, yeah, so Jay's Barber Academy and Ralph Cool, Jay's Pro Barber Academy has been working now for the guts of a year and a half. So right. it's going from strength to strength and as you can imagine, if you're working with uh, students and working your way through all the students coming through uh, tech and stuff, what we've aimed at Jay's Pro Barber Academy to do is to try and bring young ones through so they can actually have a, a job at the end. Obviously yeah. people's doing courses but they're not facilitating the jobs after. Right. Right, right, okay. And what do you do down here? I mean, you're cutting hair, but you have apprentices here too? Well, they, they, they're not apprentices here, these are actually workers, so what we do in the academy... Right, these are workers? They're workers, so what we do... In the I'm a bit slow, by the way. <laughs> so what happens is, in the academy, we teach them the academy, and we bring them down here and give them a proper job. So anybody standing in the shop is a proper barber and cutter. Right. So this so is our finishing off, This almost. is where all the magic happens. This is where all the magic happens. Uh. <laughs> I like it, I like it. But, um, you're, you're an award-winning uh, Belfast barber and apparently you started into barbering quite late in life. I did indeed, so obviously 28 is when I started actually working in this shop professionally. I've been cutting from years before. I've done my first haircut in P1 when I was five. I cut somebody's fringe off, as you, you might Oh yes, right. yes, 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 yes. So I did I, read that in the and book. And I'm actually still racking his hair to this day. <laughs> good, so. right. good, 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 good. And, you know, you're looking like a cool dude. You know, you've got... You've got the the hair, and you've got your slim, and you've got the tattoos, and you've got this place, and you've got another place in Rathcool, and you've got fans, and all the rest of it, and and you've got a wife, and how many children? We have uh, at the minute six. I'm trying to talk about the help another couple, which is having another. Hi. Uh, so at the minute I've got a five or eight team, no, maybe a couple of subs. Oh, you are a good boy. And, you know, looking at you, people watching my videos are going to say, wow, this guy has arrived. But four or five years ago, it was a very different story. It was indeed. I was out, uh, obviously drinking and partying and obviously taking drugs and stuff. So my life back then was, I was a, probably a working drug addict where I was trying to party as hard as working. So from the transition of me going to do an alpha course with uh, Cremonti Church and getting right with God, and all, everything around me now is obviously 
a hundred percent what um, what my God can do for your life. You know what I mean? So, so I'm walking down Donegal Street and I'm going up the back, back alleys to look at street art. Right. And I come across a guy under a sleeping bag, virtually lying in his own vomit, with all the paraphernalia around and about him. And, and your message this morning is to somebody like that, who's obviously on something, uh, whether it be alcohol or drugs, right. your message to that guy is there is hope. Well, I work with the homeless in Belfast and I have done for a number of years. There's a lot of people that's been through a lot of stuff. I mean, I deal with all sorts of people in the homeless. Yes, at the end of the day, getting right with God and everything else was my choice to do that. So at the end of the day, you can't just put your hand on going right. God's going to fix me. You have to have a heart of actually wanting to change in your life. And obviously, you have the vision of going and getting yourself straight. There's a lot of people in Belfast that I work with that have been through so many complex needs with maybe their uh, mum and dad or, or family members have been sexually assaulting them and stuff. And I know that these things are hard. Do you know what I mean? I can never look down at somebody that's been that's obviously on the streets and been going through stuff because at the end of the day, I don't know what people's been through, do you know what I mean? That's right. And I'm always very conscious of standing in front of anybody and going, I'm okay, I'm up with my God, because at the end of the day, I don't know what somebody's been through. Yeah. And that's what I tell my staff in, and we always have meetings about, at the end of the day, people might not remember your name, but they always remember what way you made them feel. Because at the end of the day, some people may be coming into the shop that's been going through a lot. Yeah. So we have to be very, very careful. We're all very, very close to being in a really different situation in our life. You know what I mean? We might be thinking about our family and our kids and everybody safe and they're healthy, but when it, when it comes to it, there's a lot of people that do hell. They can't even put lactic in their, 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 their lactic. You know what I mean? I call it the Belfast National Anthem. Some of these people that do hardship, they can't even heat their houses. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, there's so much to the complex needs of obviously Some Somebody's been on the drink or drugs, it's actually stuck in addiction or whatever, when realistically they might even do stuff for their family members or whatever else, or some silly decision. I've actually been asked to start, I'm going to be getting into McGabry, to talk to prisoners coming yeah, in McGabry yeah. and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, there's people who's been through a lot. Do you know what I mean? And this is why they turn to drugs. They end up turning to drugs and they can't get over because it's obviously an addiction. Do you know what I mean? But you didn't really turn to the drugs because, or, or maybe you did, but it was the lifestyle you were living mostly? Because I was working really, really hard making good money, I thought I could, you know what I mean? It was Jack the Lad. Was a Jack the Lad. Jack, Jack the Lad. At the end of the day, I stand in front of anybody, in front of any camera and tell them at the end of the day, that doesn't work. Do you know what I mean? I tried it. I, I didn't succeed. I bought the t-shirt. Do you know what I mean? See, at the end of the day, there's only one way, and my opinion is to walk with God. What God's done in my life. The shop that I had in East Belfast, yes, it was amazing. The shop that I've got now, what the locust takes away, God will give you back tenfold. And that's what's happening now. Everything around me isn't by me doing it. It's what God's doing in my life. And I'm not as good to stand in front of anybody and tell them what God's done in my life. Because at the end of the day, you have to give God all the glory. Because I'm only, I'm only Jay, you know what I mean? I'm a messenger. And my message, is, my message now is to tell everybody else about my things can be hard, but what, what uh, God can do in your life. Turn around. Um, you had a tough start in life. You, you, you lost your brother Wayne yep. and you lost your mum. Um, you were in now the, uh, what was it? Uh, it was Kern, Kernview? Kern, Kernview. That's, that's the actual gates from Kernview. That's the gates so from that, the... That, that's the actual gate we run out and then he was killed. This gate here. Right. And the, the two on the other side is the ones off the car park. The one in the middle was fabricated that looked like them. Yeah, yeah. The two either side. Yeah, yeah. So they would have been bulldozed if you hadn't done. The only reason they weren't was because years ago, I don't know if you remember, everything was painted brown by the council. So that's why they were never scrapped as metal because... They thought they were wood. They thought they were wood. <laughs> and, and this is a constant wee reminder of those... At the end of the day... Those the length, hard times. The length of time ago, yes, it was hard times, but the thing about it is, I can't dwell on the past. I can't, you know what I mean? No. At the end of the day, and if I was the other, if I was the other brother, if I was Wayne, and I, and I, or I sorry, I had passed away, I, do you think that I'd be saying, I'll mope about and feel sorry for yourself? What I promised myself now, from I sold the shop in Bill first, that I'm going to change as many people's lives as I can through spreading the word of Jesus Christ. Plus, at the end of the day, it's not even just about the money, about what we're doing with courses. And many people, it's from children's homes now, I'm working their way, that's actually on my course. It's working from the, the uh, sure. social services. So if I can make an, an impact on people's life, even if it's only for a short period of time, whether it be their conference or whether it be 
scissor techniques, comb or whatever, or making them a, a few pounds to support themselves, then why not? You, you must have seen tens, if not hundreds of guys through the course. and, and oh, I've, 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 the last two years I've done about 300 people. Oh, easy. You know what I mean? And these, a lot of these guys w were like you, vulnerable and... I wouldn't say all the clan, or all the people booked on my course is vulnerable, but no. what I'm saying is that there's an, an element, there certainly has been an element of people seeing my story, and I'm, I'm going to book on the course. Right. And that's what's been very, very, for me, um, for Phil and... and very, very good and stability to try and do better because at the end of the day, there's, look out the window, what is there out there for people? Nothing, do you know what I mean? Nothing at all. Nobody wants to help anybody. And a small thing to remember, if you drive your car down that road, there might be people that you out. See, 30 years ago, they couldn't do enough for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what we're living in, 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 in is a hopeless world, do you know what I mean? And if I can help, something, some, something as simple as coming in for her cup or give them freedom. So what we're doing up in the academy, Jay's Pro Water Academy, we're actually giving 50 free haircuts away a week to facilitate the ones that's on the course. You know what I mean? So even that, you know what I mean? If you can bring somebody into your course and help them, give them a free haircut, cheer them up and send them on their way. One of the, the you know, I, I've read your book and the real, uh, uns, well, no, the real hero of the story is your wife. Yep. That's it, Daphne. That's Orla. That's it. She, I, why in the name of goodness did she stick with you I, and your shenanigans? I think she was just, she's, I think she was sent to try and help me and to add to the you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm surprised. I was, I'm surprised. I, I said, I wouldn't have stuck with My wife wouldn't have stuck me. Uh, My wife can hardly stick me now. Uh, <laughs> That's why you're down here now. No, no, she's away. She's away. What's she doing? Well, she's away for a wee, wee check up at the at the hospital. Right. So I'm free and easy, free like a bird, you know. Um, Fra. Right. <laughs> uh, right. Fra. Get a couple of pictures that way, will you? Stand over. That's right. Take it off. And then just take pictures this way. Take it off. I stand where he is. Tell me, a different angles. Go ahead. tell me about the buses. Right, so the Ulster bus, I was meant to, I, wanted, I always wanted the bad bus. I never got around to it because obviously all the madness that was going on. And I've actually got two buses now. So what we've two brought, buses. A, a Leyland Leopard and a Leyland Tiger. What I'm going to do is bring out the buses to Volkswagen Show. What we're going to do is put the mirrors up against the, the, the thing, uh, the bus, and we're going to give the, donate all the money to children's cancer. So that's what the plan is with that. Um, and we're, I've just had one of my good friends, Martin Rogan, the boxer, has came and asked me if we want the other buses, what we're going to do at Christmas, as we're going to make one into a Santa's Grotto. And he, I'm going to drive it, I went and got my license, and he's going to be the Santa. So, <laughs> Watch this space, there's a lot of good stuff coming, a lot of positive stuff coming. And you've got to remember, the wheels on the bus go round and That's round. <laughs> What's your granny's doing the bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Oh dear, oh, this is classic. This is classic. This is great stuff. What do I say? I'm looking through my wee notes there. Take your time. Ah, I'm, I have to get a shot of your shorts here. I have to get a shot. My goodness. My goodness. Who let you out? I know. <laughs> See, in our relationship, I mean, Orla, I think it's worked because she wears the trousers in the relationship and I wear the shorts. <laughs> Well, my, Stick to barber and your jokes are crap. My wife's the same. I, I, I let her do it, of course, you know. But so anyway. Another thing I want to say. Right. There's a, an American production company that's going to invest 250000 to 300 grand and make a my book into a film. Um, I'm in the middle of now pitching it to them and, and they're very, there's a boy that runs it from, from Belfast that works in America and he said we're very, very keen but I have to do a pitch to them. So we're in the middle of doing that. Also, uh, we're going to do a, there's going to be a play in the Grand Opera House from Martin Lynch, Gerard, McCabe and uh, Matthew McConaughey. So there's big, big things coming. There's going to be, honestly, I've told everybody, there's all the ones in the homeless in Belfast shelter, they're, they're wanting to go and see it. Try so says, listen, if this is happening, they want me to cut on stage. They're going to pick, pick people out of the crowd. I'm going to be standing up in her while they're doing the play, and I'll be in the background. And then they're not going to let on, obviously, as a child, and they're going, to, this is actually Jay Cup on the, on the stage. So there's big things coming. That was one of my questions. I was going to, I was going to ask you right towards the end. I was going to say, 
what have you in the offing and because you, you, you don't stand still and, and, and another reason why I, I can't understand why your wife sticks with you she probably never sees you <laughs> I well at the end of the day it's if you stand still you know I mean you'd be left behind you know what I mean and what I, if I can make a positive impact in people's lives, whether it be us doing the homeless or we'll do, uh, I volunteer in that room, Palmer of Curve, Cancer Ward as well, me and my wife, Orla, we, uh, we volunteer up there as well. So there's always, a, there's always stuff going on. BTV, Belfast Live, and Belfast Telegraph, they want to do a story on the bus, but the bus is in Green Sport, and I get to with them. So when that comes back, it's going to be uh, it's going to be on UTV and it's going to be on Belfast Live for Sean and he wants to do a story as well. So there's plenty of stuff coming. It's, it's, no, I mean, it's all in the post. And here's me with my wee video camera yes. doing my wee channel. The only time you're beat you weren't there. <laughs> and I, I'm 70 now and I look back on my life and I say to myself, what did you do? <laughs> but anyway, that's another story. Uh, right, how do we get hold of the book? So the book is on my website, Jay's, Bar Jay's Pro Barber Academy, and the book is also on Amazon. It's also on WH Smith in the, the airport, Altagrove Airport. Oh, right it's, a, it's in the city airport. WH Smith, and it's on Amazon. So, right. so you can we also sell it in both the stores. Right, good enough, good enough. So that's how you get rid of this. Uh, and as I say, I read this, uh, I was up at three or four o'clock last night. You kept me out of my bed. Did you read it, all, did you read it last night? Ah. How'd you find it? Ah. Oh, it's, 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 uh, so it's easy to read. It's, it's simple. And it's, it's, uh, it's not beyond anybody. And it's a true story. And it's genuine. And it's, what are you doing now? I'm seven. You'll know his mother. His mother is Victoria Smith. Uh, she's Irish. She's Irish. She's Irish. She's Who's that? His mum's uh, Linda Browns. Linda Browns. That's his, that's her son. Honestly. And I'll tell you even better again. Linda Browns done the the, the paper clip of when my brother got killed. Hi mad is that? And now he's sitting with the circle. So his mother was a reporter back in the day and done the report of my brother getting killed. She was everybody's pinup girl. <laughs> so that's, and she probably still is my pinup girl. <laughs> Why? Peter, you know, where, where, you're living in Birmingham, but whenever you come over home, you, you're living up in the Castlereagh right Hills, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right? Why, in the name of goodness, do you come down, down here, away over to, to scurry North Belfast, or whatever it is? Why do you come here? Uh, I think it's twofold. Uh, firstly, obviously, the haircuts are really good quality. Um, and then, as Jay was saying, and you were saying in the interview, right. so it's just a, good, a really good sense of community, I think. Right. Um, but these, these are rough boys. <laughs> these are rough boys. You don't want to mix for rough boys. Yeah, maybe, maybe on the surface, but I think deep down, they're all, they're all very kind. And, um, I think the, the work that they do for the community is incredible. Um, right. So you're, you're happy to support that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Even if it's a bit, bit further of a drive, 100% I've come down, yeah. Brilliant. 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 Yeah. Thanks very much for letting me, me video you. Yeah. What's happening here, Jay? What we do is just take all the access her off the clan's face so we can give them a better service. Um, it's all about the experience. So when they walk out, there's no hair on their neck. Oh right, right, you, you, a rub down. And then what we finish off is Bay Rum, which is a hair and skin tonic that closes the pores and gives them that silky smooth finish. I would know about all of this, yeah. you know, I really would. <laughs> This is this is another world to me, Jay. Uh, I'm not awfully uh, do, you know wonderful about things like the uh, personal care and all the rest. But you know, uh, so, right? I'm going to finish off this wee video. I need uh, some uh, of my special chance to get a wee squirt of this. <laughs> you call this? This is this is great. You see, this is aftershave, and it, it's uh, three hundred pound a bottle. Three hundred. Oh, don't don't be putting it on. Don't be wasting it on him. So what I say is, if somebody asks me what you call this, I say it's you call this. This is a new aftershave called breadcrumbs. The birds love it. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Last question. What would you say, or you know, what? what there are so many guys and girls with alcohol and drug problems. If they were genuinely, genuinely. You know, wanting to change. If they were generally wanting to change, 
where would, what direction would you point them in? Well, first of all, you could call and see Brian Madden at uh, Church Street, Top of Lane, Belfast. Um, and you can get on a course if you're bad enough, or else you can reach out to us at Jay's Barber Club. Right. Or Jay's Pro Barber Academy and any of the guys we want to help them. Right. Good man. Listen, this has been an amazing, an amazing experience, and I even got, it even got me a sausage roll here and heated it up and all the rest of it. And I said to him there a minute ago, I don't know how this man keeps money because he seems to be giving it all away all the time. So, so, Manny, all part of your elbow, Jay. That's it. And, and keep her lit and, and keep on going and may God bless you and keep you. Stick around, more to come. Good, man.